Hey Extreme Hikers, I'm Chef Rob. And I'm Sprite. And today, we're going to be talking about... Deer. So, I love gear. If there's an excuse to buy something, I will come up with that excuse. And one of the most fun things about hiking is all the crap you can buy and stuff on your back and walk around with. Now, here's the thing. Over the years, I've figured out what works and what doesn't work. And I want to share some of that information with you. So today, we're going to do a pack and shakedown. You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> all of you. And today we're going to do a pack shakedown and see exactly what it is that I bring along on hikes and why. And maybe it'll give you some ideas of how you can adjust your pack or get started if you're a new hiker. So first thing we want to think about is pack size. Now, we're going to be packing for a day hike no matter what we're doing. Whether it's a training hike or whether it's the big hike, we're not going to be carrying around sleeping bags and tents in the kitchen sink. So... There's lots of considerations that you need to take into account when you're choosing a pack size. This is the Gossamer Gear pack that I wore last year and the year before, and it's very, very large. I can carry a stove in it. I can carry a meal for two or three people. All of the layers of clothes that I might need in cold climate, including my rain stuff, a couple bottles, a uh, three liter bladder, and a partridge in a pear tree. It's a little bit too big, and I'm trying to simplify it. In the middle, you see kind of a standard size camelback. Now, this backpack holds a three liter uh, bladder as well, and it's a little bit more suited for what we're trying to do. It's probably ideal. You've got a, a uh, running vest, so it holds a one and a half liter bladder, so you'll have to refill your water more often and make sure that you have that resource available. It's got a little bit less storage, so you've got to have a really good tightened up gear list, um, but ultimately it's going to be the lightest and most comfortable. So you have to decide whether you're gonna be carrying a good amount of gear and you need to accommodate for it, or whether you can go small, light, tiny, and comfortable. So like I mentioned, I'm going with the Salomon Advanced Skin 12 pack. I have no idea what all that means. Um, this was kind of expensive, um, but in my experience, the tighter the pack, the smaller it is, the more comfortable I'm gonna be, uh, the higher the likelihood is that I can jog a little bit on some of the straightaways, uh, and you know, we're gonna see how it goes. So I'm gonna unpack this and show you what I bring on training hikes and what I bring on the big hikes so you can get an understanding of what's going on there. So this is the contents of my pack exploded. On the top, you see a fleece jacket. It's just kind of a standard Patagonia pullover. Um, that is the warmth layer that I use. Uh, right below that, on the far left, is my Garmin Forerunner 235 watch. Uh, it's mid-range. I use a GPS watch instead of my phone to track my mileage because we go in and out of cell phone range. And the GPS watches are more sensitive, which means you get a more accurate reading. And when you've been hiking for 20 some odd miles, you want to know that you've got the numbers exactly right. Uh, next to that, I have a uh, little pocket knife and, of course, some chapstick because my lips get chapped from running my mouth so much. Uh, below that, some earbuds so I can listen to a uh, podcast or an audiobook during some of those long stretches by myself. Um, below that are some little hotties hand warmers. Always got to bring hotties along on the colder hikes. Keep yourself nice and toasty. To the right of that are two of the most important pieces of gear that you can possibly have. That is my rain gear, which is a Montbell ultralight jacket that I absolutely love. And below that's my ditty bag with all my little odds and ends in it that I'll show you in just a second. Some kind bars for snacks, toilet paper for the business. And then next to that is my water bladder. Now this is the inside of my ditty bag. Uh, that weird looking bag you have there is Dyneema or Cuban fiber. It's waterproof, it's super duper light, and kind of ridiculously expensive. Um, I got it from z -Packs. You can check it out on their website if you want to get one too. Um, I love it because I can pull this out, throw it in a bag, and it's got all the essentials in it. Um, the only thing I'm missing from this picture is a headlamp. I will list all of this information about what I've shown uh, in this post as well. Um, below on the far left, I've got a very small USB charger. 
Um, next to that is my first aid kit. I've got Excedrin, some anti-inflammatories, a couple of um, band-aids, a couple bucks in cash just in case I need it. Um, an iPhone charger, lightning cable I think is what it's called. Um, a micro USB charger so that I can actually charge the battery pack if I need to. Um, in the middle there, that little circle is a light load towel. These things are awesome. Um, they're super inexpensive. They're really, really light, tiny. I can take it out of that pack, throw it in some water, and it expands into a giant towel. Uh, and you can use it for all kinds of stuff. Love that. Um, the gloves up top are actually um, Possum Down from Australia. That's a Z-Pack set of gloves. They're super duper warm. And below that are these glove covers. So here's the deal. Gloves have been one of the most frustrating things that I can possibly think of to deal with and figure out on the trail besides maybe shoes. Uh, and the reason is because they don't really make good waterproof gloves, but if you're out in the rain and it's freezing and your hands are super duper numb, the last thing you wanna do is wear soaking wet gloves. So the cool thing about the Z-Packs Possum Down is you can wear the gloves, slip these little guys over top of it, they're waterproof, they're still warm, they're not gigantic like uh, spacesuit gloves, and you can get the job done. So these are tracking poles. Um, if you want to use them, you can, but you don't have to, but I suggest you should use them. That's right. And they give you a lot of stability on the trail. Trekking poles are great towards the end of a really long hike. Right, Sprite? So one thing that I didn't have sitting in my bag um, is this. And this sounds ridiculous, but it's really good. It is a selfie stick that sits on top of the spike part of your trekking poles. One of the things that you're gonna need to be doing as you hike is raise cash. And the way you do that is to make videos, take pictures, and people wanna see your beautiful smiling face. And the best way to get that done is a selfie stick. I think I got this off of Amazon. I'll try to find the link and post it below, um, but the trekking pole selfie stick phone holder is an excellent yeah. addition to any pack. Wouldn't you say, Sprite? Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're a new hiker, I know it feels overwhelming to see all this stuff, especially when you price it out. Um, the key here is get a pack that's got some kind of ability to carry water, Layer yourself like an onion, so things that you can peel on, peel off, and put on as you go. Um, because with the change in elevation, you're going to get warmer and hotter. Um, and a good set of shoes, and you can kind of get everything else as needed. You know, it's hard in the woods, isn't it, Spite? <laughs>